Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll be quick because I'm, I'm told that I'm given like 10 minutes, so I'll be like super quick. Anyway, I, I'm very bad at documenting, like very bad. Um, so most of the times when I go to Hackspace, because I remember hearing this before, like you always have to ask for consent before you start taking pictures. So my common assumption is that I don't take any pictures first, unless some like I talk to somebody and say like, hey, can I take pictures and do so I do. Unfortunately, I went to a lot of places, but I didn't take a lot of pictures. <laughs> but I'll try my best. Um, so the, f the first one is not exactly like a hackerspace tour. It was something that I did uh, together with the Media Lab and ourselves. So we went to Paris as uh, part of the Singapore More and More like, um, Alliance like an event. So there were a lot of Singaporean artists with French alliances. And basically what Urban Explorations do is um, they are like designers, artists, or like uh, researchers or engineers. and they come together and decide to make tools to understand um, the urban environment. Um, and because I'm very, very fascinated with snails, um, and I assume that a lot of snails are in Paris, but I'm completely wrong. Um, and I'll find out when, I'm, when I'm there. Yes, uh, so this was an exhibition <laughs> space. Oops! Alright. So this was the exhibition space, so it was not like a typical art exhibition which a lot of French people would be like, oh my god, like, they were like, what, what's happening? Because this is the fine arts uh, place and the fine arts place usually have like people who are here for like uh, prints and um, more visual art things. So it was kind of a shock when they went there and they, they, they didn't really know how to react, but some, some of them were fascinated with it, but yeah. And yeah, so yes, if some of you still remember Cedric, he was there as well, he came for the thing. And yeah, this was some of the infographics I did. Uh, one part of the small little thing that we did in the month. So it was like one week I was missing out because I had exams, so I had to stay here. The second week we really had to know what tool we want to make. The third week we have to go and collect data in a place that we don't even know. And the fourth week we had to exhibit, so it was a, a lot of rush. And um, yeah, it was kind of difficult for me, but uh, I kind of managed, I guess. Um, and yeah, so I was bringing the built tools, and there was something else I, I built, which is actually, oops. I have no idea. Okay, you're back again. Yeah, I'm back. Oops. Oops. Maybe more, more, more resolution to get up. Maybe the, the, is the cable being... Yeah, I mean the cable is loose. It's actually yeah. going right below your I'm not sure if it's... No, it's there. It's here. Maybe it's... Oh, uh, oh. Uh, oh. Ooh, it's like... <laughs> Some glitch or something. So I'll quickly pass this around. So this was all the GPS, the places that all of us went to. Uh, as you can see, I'm the person who usually goes to the outside of Paris. The interesting thing about Paris is that there are no snails in Paris because they import most of the snails from Czech Republic and Poland. Um, yeah, it was over. Well, apparently, like there was there was a lot of hunting for snails and then it just all went gone. The pomatia and the expersum. So I researched on three kinds of snails, the expersum, the pomatia and the leucorium. And only two of them are edible and most of them are gone. Um, yeah. And I started to see very strange... Or, sorry? Or eat, eaten away. Um, edible snails, yeah. So, escargot. Escargot, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so the pomatia is the one that's very fleshy. Actually, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of frustrated. Good to know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. What species are the snails in the Singapore grassland? No, uh, that's an African land snail. Nobody eats that. Except in Africa. Yeah. So it's possible to eat It's possible to eat them, but the parasites are very... Mm. It has a high concentration of, of parasites so in the African... Yeah, yeah better not. pick it up from the... Yeah, I guess pick up from the parasites. I know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's rotten, rotten snails. Yeah. The apple snail is long extinct in Singapore. Okay, maybe I should just like transfer it to somebody. Hmm? It's on my Gmail anyway. Uh, can I use somebody else's computer or something? Can somebody turn off the auto source? Is it? Do I have to turn it off? 
but I have a rule. Yeah, but Singapore wants to. Yes, for you, Mister. So I'll just pass this around while it quickly open up my Gmail yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Okay, I won't go full screen. So yeah, um, basically I just went to five places. I went to Pilache, of course, Pilache. And then I went to um, Montreuil, which is outside of Paris, but now the Paris, um, the government wants to put Montreuil into part of Paris. So Paris is actually shaped like a snail. Yeah. Yeah. So you can just check snail Paris and then you'll, there'll, there'll be a map. Because it's, it's the way that it urbanizes, it basically adopts many of these uh, surrounding territories to be part of Paris. And Montreuil is one of them because a lot of the working population is um, in there. So, yeah. I, I don't... Well, I tried to understand some of the politics there, but it was a bit more difficult for me to elucidate in, in whatever I was doing in the end because um, I, I felt like I was staying there too, for such a short time, so I can't do that. So yes, this was my little kid and I, I brought around. So this is the, the formation, is this one, I think. And I found one in one of the reserves, and <laughs> I'm not supposed to take it anyway. So it's, there's, it's banned since 1975 that you're not supposed to take any snails and bring it back to cook it, but... The snails are all fine, I'm very sh even during the exhibition, everything was great, so, yeah. <laughs> so then I became interested in the epigram, I mean, this is not going to be so relevant because we're supposed to go and talk about other things, so yeah, 3D printed some things. I make this tool where, you know, with the, when the snail passes by, you can check how acid or alkaline the, the fruit is. So that's like Whoa. cabbage juice, wow. nice. pH paper, yeah. Nice. So that you can just see how, whether the soil is alkaline or acidic, and if it's, um, if it's too... Uh, acidic is bad. Yeah. So, and, so, yeah. And what the snail has is a reflection of the acidity of the soil, is it? The yeah. But you must take it fresh. So fresh, fresh, when they are fresh from the soil, you can really plug them down. Yeah. So yeah, some of our friends did a really interesting one. He built this like uh, microphone thing, goes around and uh, he records the sounds and he translates and then into this, I don't know, he, he uses this quote, but I don't know what's the program that he uses, and basically with that uh, vibrations, you can translate into like a 3D object. So yeah, I didn't photograph it here. See, I'm very bad at documenting. Some of my friends did like pigeon things, some were interested in mosses. And the interesting, there are a lot of 3D printer stores in, in Paris, but they are not earning a lot of money. Mm. So I've asked them and they say that, well, simply because Parisians are, are not very, um, on such technology or like technology I don't know how they define it um, and it's quite prominent in the Wi-Fi connection I would say I think even in Indonesia it's better so yeah. <laughs> so yeah I was, we also went to this lab uh, it's, it's on nano they do nanotech oh no microfluidics and we just went there and we told them hey we want to do this art science tech thing and it's like, yeah, okay, I'll give you all my equipment for free so they gave us like petri dishes <laughs> they gave us like prospect lens so my friend makes some lens um, it's meant for microscopes, so yeah, they were quite nice, so yeah. Okay, so I don't have any pictures of this very, very wonderful place. It's going to move out in September. You can probably check it out on the net. And I'll oh, suggest right. that anybody who go to... I have some photos of that. Ah, yes, yeah. I went, I went to... Austin. Yeah, you also went to La Loop. Yes, is, yes. Loop. yeah, I but I didn't dare to take yeah. any picture because it's just like... Uh, okay, I'll, I'll share later. I, I, okay, yeah, you can share later. That would be great. So okay, uh, now this is the amazing part. So me and 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 Evelyn and and Marketa, we were in Prague, um, and I've always wanted to go to Prague. Paris was yeah okay, a nice place, but I really want to go to Prague. And no offense to any people who are from Paris here, sorry. Um, so maybe maybe Evelyn can come up with me to say a lot of the pictures that we see here. So um, Bumlet is one of the hackers' places that started five years back, and um, the people there are quite um, interesting. They have like a Bitcoin ATM that um, we send a picture to Luther and say, hey, Hackerspace Singapore doesn't have one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Oh, really? They took it back. They took it back. Oh, so really? Why? Oh, yeah, because you said there was some problem. They wanted to upgrade the, the, the machine and then after that, yeah, then after that, they, they said, after one week, they said they're still upgrading. Then after that, they said, uh, well, these are your people who come here to our Oh, oh it's strange then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, they have this thing as well, and they have this. Yeah. This is the thing that we want you guys to have as well. 
So they have like a. I'm sorry, <laughs> this is like so mean. Like coming here and like presenting and say, hey, hackers, we should have this. <laughs> uh, actually, that's true, yeah. They don't. What? Are you a member? What? No, I'm not a member, so I can't say anything. <laughs> The snacks are cool, the snacks are cool because <laughs> it's, it's registered with some, so basically it's like a cashier, right? You just cash out, you just scan, uh, they have like barcodes for each of the items, you just scan, then you can like pay. They have a lot of sauerkraut on the bottom. Yeah, they like ferment it. a lot of stuff as well. Yeah. I'm sorry, okay, yeah, okay, maybe we are the ones who are supposed to be fermenting or something like that. No, you may as well, you may. What is it that uh, Hackerspace needs again? Um, uh, this like or? this mama store that has like it's very organized and then they have like yeah, barcodes for each thing. Yeah. Is it about it's it's not not bread or not? Wait, wait. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so what kind of thing articles are there? Um, mostly actually in, interesting. There are a lot of organic food. Yeah, there's a lot of organic food. Which was strange. No, we just having food. Not just yeah. sweets. <laughs> no. Like food that they can cook because they have a kitchen as well. Um, yeah. Which I realize all hackerspace always like have a kitchen lab. So yeah. I didn't, take a picture. I didn't put the picture of here because I thought it was given 10 minutes, but I probably went over 10 minutes already, so I can show pictures later. They have this as well, I mean... Oh, this is brilliant. They're yeah, this is brilliant. Yeah, everybody was talking about it. Here, it's not labeled, it's free yeah. game yeah? for anybody to bring back. No, I, I think we didn't eat it, right? Because no, we didn't eat it. Oh, yeah. You have to. You pay for it. You have to try this at some point. Actually, yeah. you know, if if anybody is interested, we can do a session. Yeah, we can do a session on this. Oh, it's, it's, it's a, it's a little, uh, wait, wait, okay, let's listen to Saad about this. It's, it's thing. like chewable tablets. So you you take these things uh, and you chew them, spread it all over your tongue, and what it does is it basically kills all of your taste buds except for the sweet ones. So yeah. and it's natural, right? Yeah. So what? But what happens when you bite into like a, a lemon, a lemon lime, or yeah. calamansi? You normally get this reaction inside yeah. your mouth. You don't. No, you don't. It Only sweetness. Yeah. So it kills yeah. your tongue's ability to detect anything but the sweetness. So you actually yeah, taste. Yeah, we can bite. Is it so everything is sweet after that. No, you, you, It's not exactly sweet as in sugar sweet. You taste the the, the actual sweetness that's hidden underneath right. the calamansi yeah. or, the, or the lime. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you should try coffee with this, it's amazing. Wow. How long does it take? Say it? How long does it take? About 20 minutes. Yeah. After that, it disappears. Yeah, you can yeah, use the. Yeah, I was about to say that it's actually from a certain species of plant that you can just. There was a lot in Taiwan where I was talking to somebody. Yeah, but anyway, it's from a natural berry. So you're saying it's available in Singapore? Yeah. Out in the open, you can just plug it in. Storage. Well, you're talking about the berry, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. It's a lot for the GPS code. So the most interesting thing about Bermuda is that they have an amazing bio lab. This is amazing, and me and Adeline have this like so-called theory that sort of like. Uh, post-communist, also post-communist countries have very strong connections to our university. So, if any infrastructure is not needed anymore, um, we need left two minutes. It's not needed anymore. It will be, it will be passed on usually to people who might need it. So, it's easy to get a lot of yeah, it's easy to get a lot of stuff. They have like an ultrasound machine. Like I know two ex-communist countries. Where yeah, where there was the other theory as well machine. about the. I know hackers space that go to the cryo-electric microscope. They have. Whoa. They have. Really? It. They have. They have some really cool yeah. stuff. They've got like all kinds of crazy chemicals that you can never get. Yeah, they make their anymore. own chamber as well. Yeah. That's marketer. Nice. Oh, they have a pulley system, yeah. What was this again? I can't remember. He was Indra was a, Indra was one of the guys who was this is a They went mining as well for radioactive substance uh -huh. to test in the lab. Because it's radioactive? Yeah, it's very radioactive. So he has this radioactive detector that he he he, he got from the lab yeah, or something, yeah. I mean, they just have all this old oh, equipment. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is the X, the X-ray that somebody's hand went in, right? This is the machine with them. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's the so microscope. The microscope. Yeah, the microscope. Fancy microscope. Yeah, for you know, for test there's looking at small ICs and removing. So they are removing some of the ICs from old electronic equipment to make into other things as well. I, I can't remember what Indra said. Their own very fancy gel tray. More microscopes. Come on, this is crazy. Yeah, this is not a lab. This is like, this is crazy. I can't believe they got this. We are so jealous.
What is that? What is that? Pipettes. Like a whole set of pipettes. Yeah. yeah. So make, mixing. But they just put it in here. It's like the soldering yeah. rod for a biohacker. Yes. Yeah. But a very expensive one. <laughs> hey, soldering irons can be really expensive. <gasps> and then this here, this bunch of like Tesla coins and all that, I, like really it was just too much. They, they even made their own. Oops. It's an indication that my two minutes is gone. It, it, it can't keep up with you. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Well, we have two minutes. Like yeah, what they were making their own like batteries or something like that. <coughs> what's in the box? I couldn't catch what he was saying. He was saying it so fast and he doesn't really repeat it. Yeah, Indra. So what? Somebody like accidentally stick their hand into no, the X-ray. No, he did it. He did it on purpose. Yeah, he did it on purpose. <laughs> and then his hand. So they were machine. Yeah. yeah, it's just in front of this thing. But yeah, I went to this other place as well in Prague. Um, it's a new. Um, hacker space, they call themselves a hacker space. And apparently, in this place, um, well, there's some kind of con like small little conflicts here and there between these two spaces, but basically, it always happens when you have somebody new coming, but it's not like hostile or anything. But anyway, they get their, I think they were funded by somebody to open up this space, and um, apparently, it's not by somebody, it's by somebody notorious in, in Prague. So, yeah. And when I went there, it was interesting that the only form of currency they accept is Bitcoin. So you, mm -hmm. yeah, they have a cafe as well. It's three levels and there's a cafe. And um, yeah, it was very fancy, but you can only use Bitcoin. And I, I, I kept telling her like, you know, I only got like, you know, can I use my <laughs> normal money? And she's like, no, no, you have to use Bitcoin. It's like, okay, I, I, I will use the Bitcoin. So apparently I found that actually it means this, but oh, I won't have time to elaborate. So they, yep. Ooh. Institute of Crypto Anarchy. Yeah. So we have all kinds of workshops, um, mostly actually interestingly, theoretically based. So people come together and start talking about okay, what are the ethics I mean this I'm hearing from Marketa, what are the ethics of like body mod modification. Okay, she they also have like uh, people teaching how to do 3D printing and stuff like that, but more more most of them are quite like uh, critical about this whole maker culture as well as like other forms of like, you know, technologies that are coming up. This uh, yeah, fancy paper cardboard office. Quite nice. Yeah. Uh, again, I didn't take a lot of pictures. I'm sorry, this is a view, irrelevant, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, just to show a bit of Prague. So yeah. Okay, then I was at the Shenzhen Maker Fair. I only have like, what, less, I'm minus three minutes already. So I just quickly flip, 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 flip. Yeah, I need people talking. <laughs> And uh, I love this part most. I, I really love this thing about Shenzhen Maker Fair. Or maybe like most big events, like everybody has their things up, so it's like uh, yeah, circling. This, what's yeah, this, Kevin? That's, that's a Chinese thing. Really? It's a Chinese thing? No, it's a Chinese thing. Sorry? Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very Chinese thing. Every people are using the, the Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The whole room. I, I'm also very interested in like, actually we should talk a bit more about this, like how the, the bigger com companies like um, Intel, and I, I, I believe in the Maker Fair in Singapore as well, they'll be speaking, um, how they're also trying to prototype their own boards. I mean, this has happened already with Intel, with Galileo, right? So Qualcomm is also doing it. So this is an interesting moment, I guess, for most people who call themselves makers, or even hackers as well, so yeah. This was, I had a very nice recording of this, I really wanted to broadcast it, but well, I couldn't extract it out of my iPhone, don't ask me uh, why, but there was one moment where basically David from Shinchese was asking Kelvin Kelly, what do you think about Internet of Things? I think it's going to be like a Cambrian explosion because there are so many things that are being produced already, 25 million or something like that, he was saying, 25,000, I can't remember. And he said, that, what, 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 what we mean for Shenzhen? And I'll leave it at this, that Kelvin Kelly just said back that there will be more choices, to put it simply. Yeah. So that was an interesting point. I also spoke uh, with uh, Stephania invited me, so that was nice as well. It was the ending, and there was one uh, lady there, Patricia, that was making motorbikes for women in Canada. She was pretty cool because she was talking about how, like, uh, she builds uh, motorcycles from the woman out. So it's like basically from the women. They collected data from like one thousand women or something like that about their body shapes and stuff like that. So they modify the bike such that you know it becomes like a, a suitable vehicle for them to drive. Super fast. I mean, I really love this rocket thing as well. Um, okay, but I will not elaborate so much because I have no time. And make fashion. There's some photos I have here as well. The prosthetics was nice. Oh, yeah. And on a few nights, I went out with my supervisor. 
and we went to other spaces at night. Um, so I didn't do some of the things that were in the Maker Fest. I went out. Um, and there was the Shenzhen Open Innovation Lab. I was only there for four days, so was, everything was a bit rushed. Um, it was actually in the same building as this. I think it's a, it's a manifestation of the collaboration between the Chinese and Finland. So it's called the Sino Finnish Design Park. And this is one of their innovation labs. I was talking to a guy, his name is called Ken. He was from Foxconn for 15 years. He was telling me about different, a different perspective, I say, from, yeah to the whole maker culture. So they had this like exhibition space where they were showing all this 3D printed stuff. Yeah, I think, I guess people should go if they had in Shenzhen. It's kind of interesting, the things that were being said. Yeah, museumizing, museumizing this whole maker culture is always interesting, so yeah. If people have a time, and of course my favorite place, <laughs> ah, oh, I had so much fun. <laughs> I was only one time because I only had four days and I was so upset on Saturday, they said it was a dumpling festival, so nothing was open. Yeah. So I was really upset. <laughs> and then Sunday I was like, I'm going to skip everything and just go for this with Saad. And I was so happy to see so many circuit LEDs. Like, this is crazy. Okay. Um, kids, you, well, this is interesting. I mean, a lot of families are in this businesses together, so you see a lot of y y mm. young kids you are assembling the things. I, my feelings towards this are ambivalent. And, mm. like, I wouldn't say that it's necessary. Like it's wrong or what? I'm, I'm just ambivalent about it. So I bought solar panels as well, that, solar chargers, so people can take a look at them. Yeah, there were a lot there. there. Um, the I, I I haven't tested out yet. Actually, I didn't have time. Um, but do you try it out yet, Sat? Yeah, 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 it works really well. well yeah, yours charges your phone, right? It does. Well, you need to have bright sunlight, but I think this will work quite well you can pass this around yeah so open it yeah just open it it's meant to be a present so uh, are there no parts like direct line of sight with the sunlight yeah sorry see i'm very bad at taking photos i always feel like <laughs> weird when i'm taking photos of people and yeah so i i guess like while it's interesting and exciting for all of us like i think one part of me feels a bit strange because I'm at the Shenzhen Maker Fair, it's a different side of manufacturing and making. Whereas I'm in Hua Chong Pei and it's a different aspect as well. And I think most of the times, like, all this whole idea of like uh, making things like, also comes from like, a, there's an there's a origin, right? And the origin is often absent, like the mining process, the people in the factories and stuff like that. So I was just wondering why that really came up in the discussion during the forums, the three days of forum. At least I was there for two days, and that wasn't like a main topic, only occasionally. So yeah, I mean, yes, the maker culture makes us like active producers, but I also wonder like what the other parts are not actually elucidated in this whole idea. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, Shenzhen is like changing a lot as well. It has one of the highest average income in the whole of China as well. So that's. There's a lot of change. And I'll just end off with this. Like, I think I was so intrigued by this. And hardware is not hard. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> but actually, it was funny because one of our friends who's doing this Shanzai um, network, so basically it's a bunch of researchers who are interested in copy culture in Shenzhen. She was telling me about how mm -hmm. like there's so many changes in Shenzhen. Like, it's... It will be more, I think it will be some, it should be something that I guess people who are, who call themselves makers also think about like what would it be like if you are manufacturing like Arduinos, not only just using them to make other things, but also like the process of, of going from elements, okay, wait, I can't say this properly. Raw probably. material. Yeah, raw materials to actually. Rare, like the rare earth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know whether it's something that we are supposed to think about in terms of like how many times we buy all this Arduino and stuff like that or, mm. or is it something that is not that important for us so yeah that's all I have to say yeah. okay okay uh, next up will be security camera